What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to remove the stereo of a W203. Now in my particular case, the stereo in my W203 has already been upgraded to a double DIN unit. So I'm going to show you guys how to remove that, but in doing so, you're going to get an idea of how to remove the factory unit also. Removing everything around the stereo itself will show you guys exactly how to get to the factory stereo and remove it if you want to upgrade the stereo or replace it with something else. All that coming right up. So what we're going to do is remove the air vent, remove the wooden grain trim so that we can remove all of this here now the trip is connected to the climate control and also the buttons up here with the um, hazard lights so that's going to come out in one piece i think the biggest headache about removing all of this is basically the air vent this is the part that a lot of people may struggle with from there we're going to remove the ashtray the gear knob the entire wooden grain trim and then I'm also going to show you how to remove this little compartment right here and also the bottom of your cup holder. So let's jump into it. There is a certain way to remove this and what you're going to need is a thin little flathead screwdriver. And you see these prongs in here. There's one at the top and then there's one at the bottom. You need to pry on it, get that clip and push it higher. And see how you get a gap here? You need that gap so that you can remove the two T20 Torx screws. Okay, there you go. Now we can remove the two T20 Torx screws that are in here. That's it there, as you can see in the bottom corner. And there is another one right there. They will stay in there, so don't be alarmed about losing it or anything. Now, with that out, we need to do the same thing and get this down to the lowest point so that we can get in the top here and pry the clips down. There are clips that hold this in. Okay, so we're going to pry on the clip so we can get it lower. We'll pry on this one here as well get it lower inside here you're going to see clips that hold this up so what we're going to do is pry down on this one pull it out a bit we'll pry on this one as well and pull it out and get that out pry on that and pull okay There we go. So as you can see here, you have these two clips here that were holding it in. And what I was doing, I was getting this screwdriver in there and I was prying down on it like that. Same for this one here as well. I was getting my tool in and I was prying it down. Do the same for the one on the left as well. Then once you have this removed, all you have is a plug here and you just pull that out and your air vent has been disconnected. So next, our gear knob. You see a securing plastic nut here. You just have to rotate it clockwise and pull it up and it'll come off automatic or manual. It comes off the exact same way. And you just rotate it clockwise and it will come out. Next, we're going to remove this uh, wooden grain trim. We just pull that straight up and then slide it out. In order to remove our ashtray, you pry on this clip here forwards and then you lift up. Do the same to the other side. You pry on this here, you lift it up, and that comes out. Pull it out. There is going to be a connector at the back right here. Make sure you just pull it out. There is a little lip which then clips into this. Just look out for that because that's exactly how it sits in, like so. But you don't have to pry it or anything. You can simply you can wiggle it and it comes out. For this, what you need to do is reach underneath here and underneath here you're going to find a little silver tab these are the clips here okay there's one there right here so what you need to do here is just pull it straight down and it will unclip there's another one on this side right here as you can see right there so we'll undo that one as well all i'm going to do is grip on it like this and i'm just going to pull it straight down and that unclips as you can see now we can pull out the entire middle piece. But don't just pull it out, we have a couple of plugs to disconnect here. So you need to unplug that, and also you need to unplug two more plugs here. This plug here, you can just pull straight out. For this big plug here, how you remove it is by pressing on this lever, okay, at the top here, and then you pull that down. And as you're pulling that down, you lift the plug up and it will come out. So you press on the tab at the top here, and you pull it towards there and then you lift it up as you're doing it at the same time and that's how that comes out. Once you unplug it, as you can see here, 
the whole thing comes out now I also wanted to show you how to remove this entire thing here it gets really dirty in here in order to remove this this is really simple you just get a flathead in there and you can pry this straight out like so look at that okay and then that just comes out like that you just pry it from here and then make sure you lift it out like this because this part here sits inside this gap here take out your cigarette lighter and then you see these two tabs here you need to remove this first so you lift it straight out and give it a little twist and it comes out you can take out your rubber mat for your cup holder now you can remove your back piece and also your cigarette lighter compartment and in order to unplug it it doesn't plug in that way it plugs in this way so you just grab it hold it and unplug it and that's how you remove this entire area and the last thing I wanted to show you is how to remove your roller blind obviously once you get to this part here your roller blind just slides back and forth so all you have to do is uh, follow it along its its a rail and then you'll be able to remove it now because your cigarette lighter no longer sits there covering the spot that would allow you to take out your roller blind removing all of this is uh, very uh, beneficial in the sense where if you really want to get all that gunk out that falls in between the gaps from like soft drinks being spilled etc if you want to give your car a proper clean because if you don't this will just continue to build up and eventually it's going to become really thick and the longer you leave it the harder it is to clean okay and that's for my double din unit there are four phillips screwdrivers that hold it in I'll pull this out here and i want to show you guys how easy it is to connect something like this you can do this yourself you really don't have to get somebody to install it for you it's it's really easy to plug it in because it comes plug and play all you have to worry about is plugging everything together and, and you basically just follow the color code it comes with an adapter that allows you to plug it directly in to the Mercedes Benz and then it's a really simple uh, design it's basically just getting your double din unit together and then also installing your fascia which is this right here it just sits over it and that's what allows it to fit perfectly within the Mercedes Benz unit because as you can see here it's designed for a compartment and a single din uh, cd player and then all you do is you buy an adapter and you plug and play it, it pretty much comes plug and play and after that it's all about routing your cables and there is so many places to route your cable in order to get my cables to my uh, glove box right here it was different for me i had to cut a hole so that it could just simply go from from straight here through here and it came straight out like that it was really easy because i made a hole for it to come through i went in here and just along the wall on this side cut a hole there so that the cables could come out of and that's how i ran my usb and also my auxiliary i'm going to walk you guys basically how you would connect this double din head unit the amazing thing about connecting to european cars now they have adapters for basically every car and they even have adapters for your steering wheel controls basically everything you see here has its has a purpose at the back here it's all labeled all right we've got the rear camera in we've got the antenna normal antenna we've got the digital antenna we've got the microphone auxiliary and then we have our power plug in order for me to wire this all up all i had to do was buy an adapter like this this adapter plugged directly into here and it gave me cables so that I could connect them all up here all I did was I connected the main ones that I needed which was remote power ACC and that's basically it and then I had to connect my rear camera basically what I did here was I extended the red wire and then I plugged it into my trigger wire and that's the only way you can get it to work on a pioneer unit if you plug in your rear camera it won't just switch to it automatically you have to connect a 12 volt switch power source which is basically your your positive cable for your uh, reverse light and you need to connect it to your trigger wire from one at the back so where my AV cable plugs into the the camera at the back the trigger wire 
is then extended so that it can also plug into the positive of the reverse light and then the trigger wire on this side is then simply connected to the trigger wire for the Pioneer head unit which is the purple with a white stripe that way when I engage reverse it will get a signal from the reverse lamp and tell the head unit to turn it on that way as soon as you switch into a reverse, the rear camera will then come on. You need to connect the trigger wire in order for it to work. If you don't connect your trigger wire, the Pioneer unit will not know to switch. And the only way for you to then see your reverse camera is to then go into your rear camera and then it will display then. That defeats the purpose of having a trigger wire. There really isn't much to explain with all the connections. It is pretty much plug and play. This comes as a whole adapter. Okay, so it plugs into here. And then you have to connect your uh, main wires here, which is your remote, your ACC, your power, battery. And then it plugs into this um, adapter here. And then this adapter will then plug into your factory um, harness. And then it will add on this canvas controller here so that your steering wheel controls will also work. Car audio companies have just made life so much easier for the installation of head units by producing all these um, harnesses and connectors so that you don't have to worry about you know cutting and splicing and soldering i really do recommend to get uh, adapters like this if you ever want to install a aftermarket head unit and then it's just a matter of routing all your cables where you want it to go all right so now i'm going to put everything back together and just show you guys how everything goes back together tidy it all up here push that in there you have to make sure that everything gets tucked in make sure nothing gets unplugged at the same time all right so now we will start with the um, four screws that hold in the head unit also another thing before i finish off the the most important thing is to um, connect your handbrake all right your remote wire and basically it's something along those lines where you turn the key on you touch it and then you turn the key off remove it and then you touch it again all of this is in the installation manual so it'll basically show you how to do that Make sure all your other wires are out. You do not want to um, install it. And then um, you don't want to have a wire missing when you plug back in your center console. But obviously you need a facier kit so that your double din head unit will, will fit in. That's back in. Our wires are still out here. I'm going to start by reinstalling everything at the bottom here. In order to put everything back in, we need to start with the bottom pieces. So we'll put in our, our rear piece first. Okay, that's important. Next, we will put in your cigarette lighter. And then we simply just plug it back in. Like so. We slide it in on an angle like this to get it in. We push it back in. Now we can grab this here, a little um, storage holder. And remember, you got to follow the curve. The curves here so we need to come in straight and then push it straight down and it will clip back into place and then we have our cup holder the thickest part of the cup holder sits at the back so it's level okay and then that just sits in like so we just have to replace our coin holder just put it in this side first and you push it straight down now from here we need to put back the center piece and then from the center piece, we'll go to the ashtray, the ashtray, and then the trim piece. Okay, so we'll grab our uh, center piece and we will plug everything back in first. So we have this uh, plug here. It only goes in one way. Okay, and then we'll plug in this plug here. All right, so to replug this back in, you need to pull back on the tab so that it will release. That's how it has to finish. Okay, so as you push it in, you want to pull this lever back over the top so that it clips over it. All we have left is the the one plug in the top here, and that's this plug here. It only plugs in one way. It looks like it plugs in the other one, but it doesn't. Okay, some people have more than one plug here. I've only got the one. Okay, and then we just plug that in. What you need to do now, line up your screw holes, but at the same time, you want to pull down your clips at the bottom here, just like when you remove them. To install this middle piece, make sure that you've lined up the screw holes like we discussed there okay these two screw holes here and then you make sure it lines up flush with the uh, head unit and then you go down here 
and remember before you put it in you have to make sure that these clips are pulled down do not push them up or else they will get caught okay they have to be down like this when you go to and push it in and then to reinstall it all we have to do is push it forward and it will clip back on like so you do the same to the other side so as you can see the clip is pulled down like we're going to release it and then to reinstall it we just push it forward and it will clip back on that is our middle the surround for our head unit reinstalled double check that your screw holes are still lined up next thing we're going to do is reinstall our ashtray as you can see on the back of the ashtray here that's where it clips on there's a tab here the same thing on the other side right there reconnect the light first right there we'll grab our little light and it goes in this way here and then you push it in like that and it just clips back in we have to make sure we slide it on in first like so and then you push it in make sure the lip of your ashtray is sits in like that and it's flush along here and you push it in and then all you have to do now is push down and it will clip in place now the ashtray is back in remember to reinstall the trim we need to slide it in this way first we slide it on in we push it back and push it down and there we go all we have to do is reinstall our gear knob and also our air vent and we are pretty much done I will put this old one back on for now as I'm sure the majority of you have the old gear knob maybe not a new one turn it clockwise to loosen and counterclockwise to tighten put that on first so you can tighten it you put your gear knob on okay push it down as far as it goes and once you do that you just turn it counterclockwise and your gear knob is back on then we just push our gator boot gator down our gear knob reinstalled now for the last part the air vent first we have to re-plug in the plug that plugs into the side of our air vent and then as you can see here it basically just slides back in and we screw in the two t20 torque screws and that is it so we'll grab our plug it only goes in one way we'll plug that in first wham what i like to do in order to get it back in is i make sure that the wires in here sit in first so i'll come in on an angle and then i'll come in like so we need to make sure that the bottom goes in first make sure our wires at the top here go in and then we push down and we just need to slide it on in okay and there we go so in order to put it back in you want to lift it at the bottom but make sure the tops in first lift it up at the bottom and then we push it straight in and it will clip back in like that we need to raise it up again so that we can put back in our t20 torque screws screw them in just till they're snug you don't want it too tight that you start breaking plastic okay we just screw them back in nice and snug and there you go guys that's how you remove the stereo for your w203 and also the middle compartment the sent the ashtray the storage compartment and also the coin holder your cigarette lighter and your ashtray and the center bezel and well there you have it guys how to remove the stereo of a w203 i really hope you found this video helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and as always don't forget to like share comment subscribe ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads until next time this is mike with mikey's vlogs signing off We'll